Hey, what's up you guys? It's Scott with Everyday Home Repairs and today I'm going to show you how to install laminate countertops in a galley style kitchen. This would be one of the most approachable projects, especially if you're just starting out because you don't have any corners and seams that you have to deal with. They're just straight runs that you need to cut and get into place. Now with that said, there are some different tips and tricks and it's always nice to see somebody do it so you can get the plans and supplies in place for your own project. So let's jump in and talk a little bit about removing the old laminate countertops. Okay, so for the old countertops, I have pretty much everything removed, but I do have still an old piece setting in on the cabinet. What you wanna do is take your time. If you get in a hurry and start ripping things out, you can cause a ton more damage, and then that's just more drywall work or painting that you're gonna to need to do before you get to install the new countertops. So usually, at least in my area, how these are secured is they're secured through the corner brackets inside the cabinets, and then you'll just have some screws, usually four in each cabinet, popping up and securing into the countertop. So you just need to unscrew those and depending on if they put anything between the countertop and the cabinet itself, they might just pull right off, which are what mine did. Additionally, you're probably going to have some silicone on your backsplash, possibly on the side as well. So you're going to want to take a sharp razor blade and cut that off. So when you lift it off, you're not damaging the drywall. So once you get those off, again, I would take your time. If you're just going to set in countertops exactly the same, it's going to be nice to keep these in whole, set them off to the side, and then you'll have those for your measurements. One thing that I like to do is I do like to get a good measurement on my backsplash. This one is five inches. Why I do that is because that's part of the planning. If you go and you see that the backsplash on a new laminate countertop in your area is not the same, then you're going to have a gap that you might want to make up by building up some shim pieces like this, which is an inch and a half by five eighths. So you might want that five eighths to lift up that countertop and then that will help cover any drywall damage, some unpainted surfaces, or just that ridge that you'll get at the top of the old backsplash. It's, each project's gonna be a little different. So, but that is just one way that you can save a little time. All right, so now with everything removed, I'm gonna go out and start planning out the cuts for the new countertops. All right, so now with the eight foot section on some saw horses, I'm gonna mark the front and back near the backsplash measurements and then connect that cut line with my guide, which serves as a straight edge. So now with that cut line, I'm going to put my circular saw adjusted all the way up so the blade touches the cut line and set the guide with some C clamps and then also that small guide for the backsplash. And then put down some blue painter's tape on the laminate side to help protect and help minimize the chances of chips. So with the safety glasses on, you'll adjust your blade and adjust it down to about an inch and three quarters or two inches so you can complete the cut. Because you're gonna have to get around the front edge and then also rotate around the backsplash here which I'll have to go back through and, and cut a little bit more. If you want more in-depth tutorial on how to cut a laminate countertop, you can see this link up in the upper right-hand corner. So now we'll remove everything, flip it over, and inspect our line. And overall, I'm pretty satisfied with this. It's no chips, and it's a nice, smooth finish. So now with the countertop cut, I want to come back in and install some build-up strips. Four build-up strips, one, uh, two on each of these cabinets. Then once I get the countertop in place and cut out the sinkhole, I will come back through and put a few more build-up strips or small pieces on the front surface of the sink base just because the countertop is going to lose some of its structure once that sinkhole is removed. So pre-drill these and then screw in. I'm just using drywall screws, two inch drywall, drywall screws for this. And then get those all set. And now I'll take the countertop and make sure it sets in place and everything fits up. All right, so I just finished up cutting the two smaller sections. 
on the stove and refrigerator side of this galley kitchen. So I'm setting those into place before I build them up and then I have three uh, of the end caps that I need to install. So I just wanna make sure everything is fitting up and looking good. So at this step, what are you actually facing? In most cases, you're probably not looking at a perfect gap all the way around the sides and then also on your backsplash. Now this could be from your cuts on the laminate countertop, but more reasonably, it's probably from your wall surfaces not being perfectly parallel or perpendicular, and then those cause a varying amount of gaps. So the question is, what can you do? If, if the gap here is on the wall surface, for these countertops, they do make what's called an end splash. Instead of a backsplash, it's an end splash. And that gives you a very large gap that you could cover up with an end splash. So depending on where you got your countertops, look and see if they have those available. I know in my case, they're a two week lead time, which is kind of crazy, but that is what it is. So if I needed one of those, I could get it on order, install it, and then I could cover up that gap. Additionally, you are gonna put silicone bead between the wall surface and the countertop. So I'd say if it's an eighth of an inch or less, you're probably good. You can make that up with that silicone bead and no one's gonna know the difference. If you're on your backsplash, like this one actually, and you have a 3 16 on one side or, or even a quarter on one side and then nothing on the other, you can do what's called scribing. So let me show you how that would work. All right, so now I'm going to want to scribe this backsplash to fit the wall. So what you do is you get your countertop in place exactly where you want it, and then you get your largest gap. Use a compass. You don't have to use this. You can use a pencil and space it out with something else. But what you're looking for is consistent spacing. So I'm going to set to the maximum width. Here it's about 3 16 of an inch. And then I'm going to follow the wall surface marking on this blue tape. And then what that will give you is a varying thickness in the actual cut line that you want. So you cut that surface off and then you'll have a much better fit between the backsplash and your wall. So now with the countertop on a solid surface, We'll take a jigsaw and not use a standard jigsaw blade. We'll use a specific laminate blade. Look down in the description, you'll see these exact Bosch blades and they really work well. During the cut, take your time. Let the jigsaw do the work. Don't force it or you'll get off your cut line. The key here is to stay straight and you also with the tape and this blade, you should not have any chips coming off your laminate. We'll take a look, and there's the finished product. So now taking the countertop, putting it back in place, you'll see there's a it fits the wall much better than it did before, and a consistent gap throughout. So now your countertop is fitting as desired to your cabinets and then also your wall surfaces. Now it's time to move on to finishing out the ends with end caps. You can see this one over here already has the end cap installed, looking good uh, and it's ready to go, it's all completed. But this countertop needs two end caps. It needs one towards the stove side and then one towards the refrigerator side. So I'm gonna walk you through and show you how to do that. All the tools that you're gonna need is you're gonna need a file set. You, I'm using a flat and a round file. Usually this would come in like a three file set with the third one being like a triangle uh, file, which you're not gonna use. But if you want to know exactly what files, again, description will have all the tools and links so you'll know what to use. Uh, simple framing or better, a finish hammer uh, to, to nail in the finish nails for the buildup strips that you'll need uh, to put on before you put the end caps on. And then an iron, the iron or a heat gun. Some people use a heat gun. I prefer the iron because the iron will heat up the end cap that has the contact cement or glue already installed. So it heats it up to activate it, but this also provides down pressure. 
So you need that pressure to really get a strong hold to the surface. So I recommend an iron set to the cotton setting on the heat. So set it up to cotton and then that'll give you what you need and you can move it along the surface, which you'll see in a second. Now, I don't expect everybody to have a router, but it is much, much, much faster to have a router with a flush cut bit. So this bit will ride this, this bearing here, this wheel will ride along the surface of the laminate countertop, and then the blade will cut flush to that. So it cuts the end cap flush to the top surface. Makes quick work. I really recommend getting one of these if you don't already have it, if you're going to do more than one countertop. If this is a one and done project for you and you don't have a router, don't invest the money. It's just gonna take you a little bit longer. So if you're not using a router, one additional thing you could use is some side cutters, usually used for wiring. These are handy because you can snip off additional material quick instead of having to file everything down. So you can snip off the big excess uh, end cap and then get it closer so then you can start to file it down and it's not gonna take as much time. So depending on if you have a router or not, you can use uh, snip, some type of snips, or I use just these side cutters, which work well. Now I will use the router for this instance, but if you wanna see an application of just using a file and getting a good finished product, you can click on this link right here, and it's another video I put out installing an end cap, and I did not have the router for that application. But here, I need to do a couple of these, and I wanna do it in, a, in as quick amount of time as possible, so I'm gonna use the router. So first up, we'll take our build-up strips and install those on the back side of the laminate countertop. You'll use the finished nails and just hammer those home, making sure that it's the outside surface as it is as flush as possible. I'll install three finished nails on each side, and then I'll go back through and install two more just to make sure everything is secure. Now, once the long pieces are there, which are three quarters of an inch thick, we'll put these smaller backsplash build out strips, which are a half inch, into place with two nails. Once you get those installed, now we're ready and everything looks good. Now we're ready to apply the end cap. So place the end cap on your countertop and make sure there's no excess material peeking out from under the end cap. Once you have it in place, you'll start to heat it up with that iron set to the cotton setting, applying pressure and heat as you work your way around. Now once everything's heated up, it is nice to have some type of roller. This is a vinyl flooring roller where you can roll that out as it's cooling down so the glue will start to bond and you're applying the pressure. And then you can test to make sure everything's secure. Before cutting with the router, I will put down blue painter's tape on the top laminate surface. What this does is it helps the guide wheel to ride on the surface and also gives me an early indication if I'm getting the router too close to the laminate and it's going to start to damage it. Without that, you're probably only gonna see it once it starts to bite into the surface. You can see right there, the blue painter's tape started to come up and I made a small adjustment without any damage happening to the top surface. So I'll work my way all the way around and finish off the backsplash. Okay, most of the material is off now but you can't get away from having to file to get a nice finished product. So I'll use the flat file pretty much horizontal with a small angle so I don't gouge the laminate surface. What I'm doing is I'm cleaning off that excess frayed plastic that you see there. And then also I know that it's, it's down to where I need to be when the glue starts to fold over onto the top surface and then starts to come off. That's when you know you're down to where you need to be. And then that round file comes in really handy for the corner there on the backsplash. This can take the most time and also it's, it's a step that you want to take your time with because you don't want to get this far and then damage your surface, have to heat up the end cap, take it off and go get a new one and start over. 
that front corner can be the toughest. So take your time. Once you're going, you're filing around a curve. Remember the contact surface is a lot less with that flat file. So the material will come off much faster. So you need to be careful. And we'll just clean up the bottom there. And then if you saw any weak points, you can take your iron, same setting, apply additional heat to reactivate the glue and then press that to get a final bond on the surface. Now we're ready to secure the countertop to the cabinets. Overall, this is a very easy process, but just something to look out for, or a few things to look out for. One, if you know you have an appliance going in, like here I'll have a stove, I want to take my measurements, and for a stove, I need 30 inches of clearance. So front and back, I wanna make sure I have 30 inches of clearance, and I don't want too much, or I'm gonna have a gap between my countertop surface and the stove, which is also undesirable. So make sure you're, if you have a refrigerator or stove or other appliance that you're lined up with the clearances that you're gonna need. And then securing it down in terms of screws, I'm using a two and a half inch deck screw. You'll wanna look and see what kind of clearances you have what you're gonna do is secure through the corner brackets of your cabinets into the countertop itself. Now you might be drilling into the actual top three quarter inch surface itself, or you might be going into the buildup strip, which means you have an inch and a half total meat to actually drill into. So jump down in your cabinets and look and see how much length you're gonna need on the screw. And what you're gonna to try to do is get half, half of an inch of that screw going into the surface you're securing. So that might be a build-up strip on the bottom of the countertop or at the countertop surface itself. You do not want more than three quarters of an inch if you're going into the countertop or your screw's gonna come through the top, which is obviously undesirable. So that's it, now they're secured. The last step, and you might be facing this, is cutting a sinkhole. So let's jump over there and walk through those steps in that process. So if you're still with me, something tells me you still have to cut the hole for your sink in one of your countertops. So in this video, I'm going to basically just speed through and you'll see all the steps in the process of me cutting this out. But if you want additional commentary and tips, there is another video where I specifically just focus in on how to cut this out. One of the big things you're gonna need, and they're not expensive, is a jigsaw. So this could be 30, 40, uh, dollars. Again, down in the description, I'll, I'll link to the Black & Decker one I have, and more importantly, the Bosch laminate blades. So they have straight teeth, uh, just like earlier when we trimmed the backsplash, and it's going to reduce the chances of chipping that laminate off. You do not want to use a normal jigsaw blade. It'll pull up on the surface, and then it'll flake off the actual laminate and it just will not equal a good product. So I'm going to get to work and then show you all those steps. but hopefully I helped you out with all those different parts of installing laminate countertops. If you want more information, and we do have more information out there, we have a deep dive video on the end cap, how to install that, specifically without a router. We have a video on how to cut your countertop to length, more detail there. And then also a detailed video on how to cut the hole for your sink in the laminate countertop. Any of those are out there, and you can kind of work through those as you work through your project. If we miss something, let me know. Jump down in the comments. Let me know what specifically you're facing and at least give my two cents and hopefully help you through that problem. Before you take off, don't forget to subscribe to our channel and hit the bell notification because then you'll get a reminder on the weekly videos that we have coming out to help you with your home repairs. And we'll catch you on the next one. Take care.